Welcome to Sheepdog Nation Podcast, the only place on the internet where law enforcement and their families can come to be understood, supported, and stood up for. Here's your host, the always entertaining, down-to-earth, yet-in-your-face truth speaker and Leo herself, Autumn Schmidt. What's up, Sheepdog Nation? Welcome to another podcast with your host, me, Autumn Clifford. I'm really excited to have you here. Today we have We have a really exciting episode. Um, I am interviewing Alex Siri. He is the founder of Shifts Shifts to Success, and um, he's the author of the best-selling book, Police Officer to Entrepreneur. So that is why you want to stick around and you want to listen to this episode. He he is based out of the UK. I uh, I met him a while ago. Him and I, um, we met on the internet, imagine that, I think on Instagram. And he, he's literally blown my mind. He has developed the system to take uh, police officers, to take members of Sheepdog Nation and um, teach them how to be entrepreneurs and run their own businesses. And you know, those are two subjects that I absolutely love. And I'm just so excited to have you here. So this is going to be a pretty short and sweet um, episode, but it's going to be tons of gold in here. I want you to listen. I want you to pay attention. I can't wait for you to meet Alex. He is awesome. And you're going to love his accent. So Alex, I'm really excited to have you here. Uh, please tell us a little bit about you and why you are a member of Sheepdog Nation. Well, thanks for the introduction, Autumn. Awesome. I really appreciate it. So uh, my name is Alex Siri, uh, and I'm the founder of Shift Success and best-selling author of Police Officer to Entrepreneur. Um, but I used to be a, first a special constable for um, Nottinghamshire Police in the UK, and then I transitioned into a role uh, called a detention officer, which is basically an officer based in custody where we will uh, process detainees. That's awesome. I love that. So in the U.S., um, that'd be that's the same as a like you work in like corrections, kind of like probably for the sheriff's department if you were to be in the U.S. That's that's awesome. Um, and we have a lot. Shout out to our correctional officers. We have a lot of them around the world listening to us. Um, and so I'm really excited because he's from the U.K. and we have a lot of listeners over there. So you guys are going to be able to check him out after this. So this is awesome. Um so Alex, can you tell us, so like this podcast is totally about like, we're really kind of about, you know, like the emotional survival, right? And, and how to handle stress and, and beating the job and not letting the job beat us. So can you tell us a little bit about, um, have you ever had a stressful situation when you were on the job and like, how did you handle it? Absolutely. So working in uh, custody, you come into contact with all kinds of people who are kind of, you know, typically in a bad mood because because they've just been arrested or they've been waiting too long in custody. Um, Out of all the moments that I experienced, there's one that stands out, uh, which I wrote about in my book, actually. And it was basically the kind of the prompt into handing in my resignation. So we had a large male who basically was tying his uh, jacket around his neck my sergeant um, called for my assistance. We went to his the cell, and uh, you know, as soon as I walked up to the cell, I could smell the awful uh, feces oh, and no. urine. So um, we opened the cell door. Uh, my sergeant and um, myself were just standing there, and we saw the guy on the floor. He was naked. Uh, the cell walls and ceiling were covered in feces and urine, and he himself. The detainee was also covered in uh, in his his own muck. So uh, my sergeant then went to remove the jacket from his neck. The detainee jumped up, and uh, my sergeant tried to grab him, um, but unfortunately he was that slippery due to the feces. He then ran towards the custody cell door, and lo and behold, I'm standing there. And I only can describe it as. Whenever you see something bad happen in life, it always happens in slow motion. And, you know, think about it now, actually, (laughs) it's going through my mind. Um, This guy ran towards me. uh, You know, I went hands on. We started grappling. Um, I then took him to the floor um, and um, we were kind of, you know, grabbing onto each other until um, my other detainee, uh, sorry, my other colleagues and my sergeant came in and uh, dragged the um the large naked male off me um i was um absolutely you know i stood up i had feces on my forehead my hair it was on my lip it was on my eyeball and i remember standing up in that moment and um you know i was i was retching i wanted to gag i can remember saying to my inspector at the time um you know 
I'm, I'm going upstairs, I'm going in the shower and then I'm going home. Um, and I can remember, you know, after cleaning myself in the custody, um, I then went home, cleaned myself for a second time. And I can remember thinking to myself, you know, why, why would anyone put themselves through this when they're unhappy, you know? And I felt a bit like a, a wage slave. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's probably the, probably the, the most stressful situation I've ever been in. And also I got a bit paranoid, you know, because you could catch any kind of disease off yeah. any person yeah. coming to custody. And that always scared me. And I didn't want that to affect my life or the people I love's life. Um, and probably, you know, to put the cherry on the top because the man was naked, his, um, his penis was slapping me um, a lot in the, in the, in the kneecaps. So uh, that was not uh, a very nice experience and a very stressful situation. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That, that, is, that, is, that is a serious situation. Holy cow. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So definitely stressful. And the thing about like, the thing about that too, is like, did you other than like see so you, your supervisor and stuff like did you have like any other backup because i feel like concur like like detention centers correctional centers like everyone's behind like all these doors you know so it always takes like longer for backup to get to you i don't know um i think so i, I so it's very similar so prisons here in the uk i i think it may take longer for them to have backup. Uh, don't quote me on that because I've never worked in a prison. But in custody, typically there's always backup around the corner. So I think we don't go any lower than like, uh, I think it was about eight team members when you're working on shift. And because my sergeant was in the custody cell, it didn't take him long to actually reach the guy. Um, it, it was probably, you know, 30 seconds grabbing each other before everyone got ripped off. But because he was covered in feces, uh, not many people wanted to get hands on. Um, so, yeah, he was dragged off by his uh, kind of feet back into his custody cell uh, and, yeah, basically put back in there and we removed his jacket. He kind of tricked us. You know, we've got to go in if they start self-harming and uh, to kind of make sure they, they don't end up hurting themselves or killing themselves. Yeah. But he tricked us and the jacket was removed and, uh, and yeah, everyone, no one was injured, I think just mentally injured. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Seriously, that is, and it is, and like that kind of stress, like a lot of people, you know, especially, you know, civilians, like they don't, they don't even understand, like they would never even imagine something like that happening, you know, and, and yet, you know, we have to deal with that, you know, Sheepdog Nation has to deal with that every single day. And so, um, so that brings me to my next question, Alex, is like, so it's kind of like, you just like touched on it, like, you know, you're mentally injured, like, how did you deal with that? Like, did you, did you find like yourself like feeling, holy shit, like, this is going to happen again, like, and kind of like on super, you know, high alert. Like, how did you deal with that? Um, I think it kind of helps me. So I was building my, um, my first company, my first business. Um, and it was kind of a relief knowing that, you know, in whenever I went back home from, from the force, um, I was working on something and building something for my future. And in the back of my heart, my mind, I kind of knew that, this wasn't going to be my life forever. I kind of knew that, you know, there is a better life. And actually when I, you know, before my resignation went in, um, I kind of, I, I thought much to myself, you know, Alex, I don't need to be there. So mentally, you know, for me, I knew that moment was just, you know, exactly that a moment in my, in my life. It wasn't a thing that I was going to stay with for the duration of my life, which sadly, you know, I see, Far too many people stay in a job, a job, sorry, for for their unhappiness. Um, so for me, it was the thought of knowing that I'm getting out that environment. You know, and I love that, and I love what you just said. And like Sheepdog Nation, pay attention because you're not fucking stuck, you know. And like everybody thinks that they're stuck, and like man, I can tell you for me, like I, I'll be straight up, like I I did. I spent some time in my cruiser, like in tears on midnight shift, like nobody knew this. Right. But like, literally like I am stuck. This is it. I've got 20, you know, I had 20 years left. Like I, this is it. Like, this is it. It's me. I got to get up. I got to deal with this shit, you know, because like, just like you, Alex, like I've I had to deal with my fair share of like, you know, awful situations just as, you know, every member of Sheepdog Nation does. And like, it affects us, you know? And, and, and like, I just remember feeling stuck and like, and I love what you pointed out too, as you said, you know, it, it kind of seems like you always, in order for you to manage your stress and maintain a good mindset, you always kind of had something going on on the side. Is Would that be correct? 
Absolutely, yeah. And, and another thing, you know, is, is to just read and develop your kind of, you can develop your mindset. Um, I think, you know, a lot of my colleagues can remember me bringing in books into work. Um, I used to read and kind of making sure that I'm um, absorbing the thoughts of successful people who wrote these books. And for me, that was like, it was learning me, it was teaching me how to deal with, you know, negative moments in life. Um, and with that being said, you know, I do believe, you know, I think one of the reasons why officers do stay in the job for as long as they do, despite their unhappiness, is because they have a, an amazing skill set of resilience. You know, when things happen bad, they jump back and like nothing's happened. But, you know, you do that long enough, that's going to affect your mind in a very bad way. Um, you know, and I've heard some horror stories, especially with the business I'm in now ranging from you know mental health issues you know like psd depression to suicidal thoughts and i just think you know there is that way out but you have to make sure you're developing yourself um, mentally i love this yeah exactly you're speaking to my soul brother i'm telling you because you know it really it really is you know alex has a point sheep dog nation and like you hear me hound on this and like you're here and you're listening and so i know that you're you know, that you are already in like a step in the right direction by, you know, filling your mind with, um, you know, podcasts and, and people who want to help you and, you know, and, um, you know, fill your mind up with good stuff. But, you know, you guys hear me and say that all the time. Like, even when I was on duty um, full time, I was, you know, always audiobooks. It wasn't just music, you know, we sit in a cruiser or if you're in, you know, a correctional facility, like I know that there's radios and stuff, uh, you know, I was listening to audiobooks. I was reading as much as I can to save, you know, my mind because like, let's be honest, you're dealing with the three to 5% of the population that absolutely nobody wants to deal with. And, you know, statistics tell us that you end up being like the top five people, you know, you spend most of your time with. Right. And so what does that look like? Sheepdog nation, like, you know, especially, you know, if you're not feeding yourself full of like good information and you're not trying to better yourself, if you're not trying to better yourself, you're not at a plateau, you're declining. Like you just need to understand that. And, and I, I truly believe that as a quote directly from Tony Robbins and, you know, Alex, and he's a, he, you're just such a great example of how, you know, you, you could have developed that mindset. You could have, you know, been like, you know, went the other way, but you didn't. And you always had something going on and now look at you. Um, and, and I'm just, I love it. I think you're such a good role model. And I just think that it's also, I think that it's something for, you know, Sheepdog Nation to look at and, and it's not, he's not an anom anomaly. I can't even pronounce it right. And, and, you know, neither am I, right? Like anybody in Sheepdog Nation can do this. Like, it doesn't mean, you know, let's say you're at freaking year 15. I'm, we're not saying you need to go quit your job, but what we are saying is that there's so much more for you and you can do things, you know, you can do things on the side. And, and clearly Alex did things on the side that made his, mind better you know and so I just I love that so um thank you for sharing that Alex and I would really love to hear like while I'm still kind of like on this like personal development topic can you tell us like a little bit about like what you're doing like right now sure absolutely um so we well I founded a company called um shifts to success which is a business training company that exclusively supports ex and serving police officers in building successful businesses with the help of the UK, some of the UK's top award-winning business mentors and coaches. And we teach a six-step methodology, which is ideas, planning, branding, implementation, products, and sales. And we do that through two accelerators. We have, firstly, the Success Quick Start Day, which is a one-day event where basically officers can dip their toe to see if business is in for them. Uh, and we also have our full shifts to success uh, one year program where we take cohorts um, through a year process with us through the methodology, enable them to build a business from scratch in industry they enjoy, accelerating them towards financial independence. And uh, what we've no mot noticed is that there's three special moments that actually um, mean the most um, to our clients, which firstly is the first sale. And basically the first sale with their business gives them belief that they're um, that their business is good and they have the ability to attain success. Number two is the resonation. Now, achieving financial independence and replacing the job income allows them to live life on their terms and replace their income while not trading time for money as such in a job. 
And the third is their first employee, which basically allows them to work on their business and not so much in it, especially at the beginning stages, which creates sustainability, um, enabling the, you know, the officer and, um, and their business to thrive. So uh, that's what we do at the minute. Um, it's going great. We're on our second cohort now. We've had a 70% increase in the intakes. And uh, it's safe to say that our clients are, are loving life, which is which is very fulfilling for me. That's good. And that's key, right? So like, but I know for me, you know, the key for, you know, this podcast is to see, you know, members of Sheepdog Nation, you know, love life. And so that, that's awesome. It's really important. Um, Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, if you guys want to find him, what, if you look down in the show notes, you're going to be able to have a link to go and check out Alex, see what's up. I'm sure you'll be able to find your way to his book, um, which will be awesome. Um, and uh, so that's awesome. I'm really excited for that. Alex, I have a question. So um, every interview, so we have some like basic, we have some, some of the same questions that we ask everybody. And one of those questions are, do you have any advice for rookies? For rookies getting involved in the police service, yeah. cool. Okay, so um, I right. I, I one of the reasons I didn't progress into the police uh, service deeper is because of this kind of uh, one Chinese proverb. Now, this Chinese proverb says, "To know the road ahead is to ask those coming back." Mm -hmm. So, when I was working custody on a regular basis, surrounded by my colleagues at the time. I looked at my colleagues who had been in 10 years, you know, seven years, 20 years, 15 years. And to be honest, they weren't that happy. Mm -hmm. They were stressed, they were low income, they weren't being appreciated. You know, they weren't, you know, being respected by the government, the organization and the community. And basically they, they, they were institutionalized. They weren't unhappy with their lives. And, uh, you know, I ask a lot of my colleagues, you know, you know, are you happy with the job? And you'd get some replies like, it plays the bills, you know, um, what else am I going to do? Or very sarcastically, living the dream. Mm -hmm. um, so I just believe that if a rookie is looking to get in the police service, just ask your colleagues who have been in 10 years ahead of you how they are dealing with the job right now. Because the chances are, if you use the same ingredients in life, if we're all baking a cake right now, we add in a bit of cancelled rest days, not seeing our family, working Christmas, injuries in your case being shot at um it could be you know um being under investigation for doing your bloody job mm -hmm. all these kind of moments these ingredients in life you put that in an oven long enough which is the length of service well typically nine times out of ten you're going to get that same result which will be you in 10 years okay mm -hmm. on the flip side you know look at people who are successful entrepreneurs and so forth and think about what ingredients they use for life and then look at their careers, where they're at right now, 10 years ahead of where you want to be, and think about how happy they are. And that was the decision that I ended up with. Now, I'm not saying don't go for the job. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying be self-aware, you know, um, of your future. Don't play for the next three, four, five years. Play for the next 10 to 30 years of your life. Oh. Because that time's going to pass anyway. And the sooner you start to develop things that are actually going to help you then hinder you, Trust me, your life, um, you know, it's going to be a lot more fulfilling and um, a lot less stressful. And that, that hands down is some of the best advice I think that any rookie officer could ever hear. And um, it's it's so true. It's so wise and it's true. And like Alex said, like, you guys, it's not like he's saying you don't need to quit or not come into this job. That's not what it's about. But like you need to pay attention to what ingredients you're put, you know, you're putting into your cake before you bake it, you know. And so if you see, you know, senior officers and you see what they're doing, you see their actions, you see how they act, you know, they go home every night and they have a couple of beers and they don't have any hobbies. And, you know, they're divorced two times. They barely see their kids. They're, you know, red in the face, they're overweight, or, you know, they're just overtime, they just slay the overtime and their personal life sucks. And, you, you know, they're just living for the job. And, you know, you don't, you don't need to put those ingredients, you know, into your life, like, do something a little bit different. And I think that, you know, Alex's example of, you know, doing, you can always have something on the side, you can have a hobby, you can, you know, you can like, you know, he teaches officers um, and ex-officers how to build businesses, like, that. you know, that's, 
that's awesome. I mean, that's the key to financial, you know, freedom. Like, let's be honest, because none of us became cops to get rich if we're honest, you know? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, so I think, I think that's just such good advice. So I just want to thank you so much for that, Alex. Um, before we leave you, do you have anything else that you would like um, to add to Sheepdog Nation? Anything, any advice, anything else? Yeah, I just want to make aware, you know, for officers in general who have, you know, thinking about living life on their terms as an entrepreneur or business owner. I think, you know, I want them to understand that you have a remarkable, valuable skill set that the majority of the public just don't have. And you build these skill sets um, on a regular basis within your job roles. And, um, you know, just give you some insight, communication, resilience, leadership, team working, problem solving, massive, massive skill sets that if you look into and do research that very successful, you know, um, affluent um, entrepreneurs also have these skill sets and those skill sets can easily be transferred into building your own business. You know, don't become a, a slave to the wage and then reach your pension, which in all fairness, isn't great. Um, and look back on your life wondering how different it would have been if you had just listened to your intuition, your heart, your guts, whatever you call it. Um, because that time, now you're an old person, it's unfortunately, it's never going to come back. Um, you're here for one life. If you are happy um, with your job, then that is success. Happiness is success, in my opinion. If you are happy with your job, by all means, stay with it. But for those officers who aren't unhappy, if they are being, you know, depressed, being undervalued, being underappreciated, low income, not seeing their kids, missing cherished special moments, you know, going through bad relationships because of the job, then I'd encourage you to listen to your heart, take your valued skill sets, and start living life on your terms. Because I can guarantee, you know, the the the, the heart of an entrepreneur can be in anyone, especially police officers absolutely and you know what well said and sheep dog nation you heard it from him you didn't even hear it from me when you always hear it from me <laughs> you guys we have we sheep dog nation have this unique set of skills just like alex said and man oh man and the job don't we undercut ourselves we we just literally because we look around and everybody you know that we're around all these cops you know, they have the same, we think they have the same skills as us and like, oh, okay, this is it. This is all I'm ever going to be. And Alex, you hit it right on the head and, and they hear me preach about this all over and over and over again. I know you've heard, you yourself have heard me talk about this and I'm just so happy that somebody other than me says it to them <laughs> so they don't think it's just me. So thank you so much, Alex. It's been such a pleasure. I could talk to you forever. Literally, we have a lot in common. We have a lot that we could talk about, but um, I know that, I don't know, we got to keep it short and sweet because I want to, I want to keep my sheepdog nation's um, attention. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here, Alex. Um, I'm going to be, we're going to be getting together and dropping, figuring out uh, ways for them to contact you. It'll be in the show notes below. And um, I look forward awesome. to talking with you again. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Appreciate All right, it. Sheepdog nation. I'll see you soon. And that was another episode of Ship Duck Nation. If you enjoyed this podcast, please go to iTunes and let us know by giving us a rating. If you have questions that you want answered by Autumn in the podcast, submit it by going to the link in the show notes. As always, stay safe and watch your six.